Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our Quick Shoot series. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and welcome to Rare Variants, a show I very rarely produce. Puns, I'm sorry, please don't go, I won't do it again. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, this is a show that I've I kinda got away from a little bit, just cause of time and other, uh, you know, things, obligations I had to do, etc. But, I'm back and I decided to hit, hit one out of the park, I think, with this particular device. Uh, basic premise of this, in case you're unfamiliar, a lot of our favorite video game consoles uh, have weird mutant versions of themselves that only come out like one region or whatever or exist in very limited numbers. Uh, there's tons of them for various consoles and by no stretch of the imagination do I have them all, but I do have a few and I thought it'd be kind of cool to do videos on the ones I have. I've already talked about the Mountain Dew original Xbox, the Orange Spice GameCube, and the Japanese PSX which was a PlayStation 2 that had um, a DVR built inside of it. And I thought be kind of cool round out the sixth generation by talking about something that's actually the Dreamcast. That way all four of those consoles are covered. Although there's more hardware that they have that I have, and I'll, at one point I'll talk about them, I'm sure. But um, yeah, this thing is obviously very special. Uh, it's also something I've actually done a video on before. Yeah, I know. So if you guys have been astute viewers, you'll know I did a video on this thing seven years ago. It's actually one of my earliest videos, and if you're wondering, like, why are you doing this again, Obviously, it was seven years ago. Times have changed. You know, the way I present stuff is totally different. There's more information now. And just wanted to kind of remind people, like, hey, this thing exists. You know, I'll show it to you. Here it is. It's still in good shape, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I, in all honesty, I'm sure a lot of people never saw the original video. So just kind of cool to, to reflect on it again and talk more about it. Um, people always ask me, it's a very common question that I get, you know, what's the rarest console? What's the rarest one you have? Blah, blah, blah. Country mile, man. This one. This, nothing, nothing can compete with this thing as far as rare and oddballness. It's also probably one of my most prized possessions just because it's so insane that I actually possess one of these things. Um, but before we get into all that, let's talk about the history of this thing. The story with this thing is short and bizarre to say the least. Uh, a company called CSK got together in conjunction with the Fuji Television Network and uh, Sega uh, to make this thing. Believe it or not, Sega didn't make this, they just kind of authorized its existence. Uh, CSK was the primary um, creator of this device. Um, the plan with this, you look at it and you think, okay, so they were going to sell some TVs that had Dreamcast in it, whatever. Actually, it was a little more bizarre than that. Um, this is where it gets strange. You have to understand, this thing came out in the year 2000. 2000, to those of us who remember it, was bizarre. 2000 was, it's the future, it's the year 2000. A lot of stuff was coming out because it's the future, and a lot of that stuff that's the future wasn't really ready yet. So a lot of these concepts that existed are neat and cool, uh, but they just they weren't there. So, believe it or not, the primary purpose of this, apparently, was that it was a communication device. Let that sink in. That was the primary intention of this thing, supposedly. There's not much information on the internet, I do apologize. This thing is, there's just not much info out there. In fact, if you look it up, my original video is like one of the first things ever about it. It's like the first review on the internet. If you go to YouTube, there's only two videos of this thing that are older than my first video, and they're both like a guy is playing it for a minute and a half, and another one is just a collection of photos of the thing in video form. I have the first review on YouTube of it. Um, my point there, though, there's just not much out there, and everything I've ever read about it kind of leads in that direction. Even the official press release on this thing is kind of vague as to what they really wanted, but it seems like, based on what I have read, communication. That's what they wanted, and you're like, okay, well, how does that make sense? Well, how is it a communication device? Well, the plan, supposedly, was that you, everyone's going to buy one of these things. It's going to be super popular, everybody's going to have one, it's going to be really cool. Uh, and it's going to come with this keyboard, and it's going to come with this uh, software, which is actually um, compatible with this. This is a webcam, and it's got a controller, and it's got a microphone, and it's got a headset. When you combine all these things, along with the fact that it has a built-in modem, what I'm essentially telling you is this is almost like a really early physical version of Skype. That was kind of the idea, was everyone's going to have one of these things in their home, they're going to rig it up, and every day they're going to be able to talk with their friends long distances, etc. Through the magic of a visual telephone. I know that's laughable now, but back then, that's the future, seeing people. You go back and watch like old episodes of The Simpsons where they project what the future's going to be like, it's always like, oh my god, we can see people while we're talking to them? 
this is the, f the future. <laughs> That's the only way to put it. Um, yeah, so obviously to give you a, a little bit more value for that, it's a fully functional television. Uh, it has a Dreamcast built in. Uh, so we'll talk about the hardware in a minute, but um, as far as how it performed, you have to understand it released for just a little over $800, the equivalency of it was like 830 bucks. It did not do well. Supposedly only around 200 of these things were ever sold. 200. Not 2,000, divers 2,000, not 20,000, not 200,000, 200. 200. Zero, zero. That's the only number I've ever found about the sales results of this thing. And it's been that same number since seven years ago when I you know, first heard it. Nothing ever changes. And all the time that I've had that video up, no one's ever come to me with like more updated numbers. And I would have assumed if they were true, they would have happened by now. The same number just keeps popping up everywhere. And I kind of think it's true because it's, it's not something you ever see. You know, they're very, very rare. And uh, until my video, at least, it seemed like there was just a couple of photos on the internet. And I feel weird about that, but we'll talk more about that later. Let's focus more on the hardware. Now, uh, you take a look at it, and it's, it's obviously bizarre looking. It kind of looks like a Chow from Sonic Adventure. Sonic and, um, you know, an iMac all had sex, and this was the result. That's just, it's bizarre, obviously. It's got a base there where you can rotate it, as you can see, just like that. It, it can go in multiple directions like that. Um, and on the top is where you put the Dreamcast games. There's a, a lid here, and uh, inside you put the game. Now, the device is Japanese region coded, um, but it's able to read mil CDs. What that means is you put a Japanese game in there, it's going to run just fine. You put in an American or European game, it's not going to boot unless you put in something like Codebreaker, which is you know, a device that allows you to play imports. Uh, it'll play your burned games, which I don't recommend, and it will play, you know, the independent games. So ultimately, it'll play all the Dreamcast games. There's just a couple extra steps that are potentially necessary. Um, I have heard of people actually flashing this thing to give it a region-free BIOS, but I, I wouldn't do that. Why the hell would you fuck with it? Just leave it alone. Um, but yeah, so as far as like a TV goes, it has a couple of features on the back. Obviously, like I said, built-in modem. So technically, you can still go online with this thing in the same way you can still go online with any Dreamcast in 2017. Not through Sega's servers, but through private servers. It is possible to still be using it. Um, it has RCA audio out, so if you're, the, it has two speakers on the front here, and if you find them insufficient, uh, it allows you to connect them to a, a different type of sound system. It has RF in, uh, for use, was intended for broadcast television, but you can also connect things like a Famicom or whatever, any kind of RF device. Because the Famicom is a Japanese console, this is a Japanese television, it actually works a little bit more easily than, say, playing a uh, Famicom in North America, where our channel systems were a little different. Um, it has composite in, which allows it to play things, I'm sure at the time they were thinking DVD player, VCR even. Uh, you could connect a Dreamcast to it if you really wanted to through composite. Um, that is certainly doable. Uh, but uh, things have changed a little bit since I did my first video on this. At the time, uh, the radio waves still existed for the purposes of broadcasting television, standard definition television. Meaning, if I connected uh, a television, like a, a television link into the RF cable, you could get all the channels. In fact, even without it, I remember turning it on and it would have some basic broadcast channels it was picking up just through the magic of antennas. And I don't think these, because these are purely cosmetic, they're just plastic. But um, it, it was able to pick up a few channels. Since 2009, when they took that down and they switched to high definition, it no longer does that. Uh, so in order to watch TV on it, you'd have to have all sorts of RF modulators to downgrade the hell out of high definition television to get it work on there. To work on there. I don't know why the hell you would bother. Um, it also has, this, the part about this I have never figured out is it has a MIDI in and a MIDI out port. MIDI, I don't know much about it because I'm not an audio guy, but I know it has something to do with music. And the press release for this thing even mentions like it has MIDI ports for music, but that's all it really says. There was an official Dreamcast MIDI cable released. I own it, but I don't think it has anything to do with this. I don't think that they were in any way correlated. I think it's just a coincidence. But uh, yeah, it has something it can do with MIDI cables. Uh, and it's got a hardwired power cable, uh, which you can use in North America. Um, you cannot use in Europe unless you have, like, you know, uh, step-down converters and all that stuff. In North America, you could just plug it straight in and have it work, but it's recommended to have an, a, a still use a step-down converter, which I actually have it connected to currently, so you're going to see it turn on in a second. Um, but yeah, so that's it for the back there. Uh, I guess now it's time to turn on. Now you'll see down up here, you'll, there's four buttons, and down here there's four controller ports. 
Uh, controller port one is currently connected, the other three are not. Now up here you have all the buttons for the interface. Uh, the one on the right here, well, uh, over here where I'm touching it, which is to, to you, is uh, camera left. Uh, that one turns the device on, which takes a minute to boot up. Then there's three more. Uh, this one is the uh, button that allows it to switch interfaces. The first one you saw there was RF. This is composite mode. The next one is Dreamcast mode, uh, which you noticed didn't actually do anything yet. The next button here is to switch between, uh, the, to increase or decrease volume. And this one here is to switch channels, which doesn't really have a purpose again because we're not using it as a television. Um, but if you want to get into Dreamcast mode, there's two ways to do it. And you press this button, and sometimes you just cycle, sometimes it'll just turn on, and other times it won't. Uh, in order, the more reliable way, and I, this is a stupid ass design choice, uh, is if you have the remote control, there's a TVCX button. Now, you basically would take it and you press it until it cycles through, and you can see now it says Divers 2000 series and it's like booting up, right? Uh, so I've already got a game in there I actually popped in, in almost paying arrogant homage to myself I'm putting in Sonic Adventure because that was the same game I had in there originally when I did the video seven years ago. Now, it's, uh, it'll boot up, as you can see, works perfectly fine. Uh, it's going to present me with some sort of message about needing a memory card, I think, because there's not one in the controller currently. Uh, skip past that, and uh, you'll see it in action a little bit here. You can hear it. I'm going to turn the volume up a little. I know sound is never really good in my videos, but the point is, you can hear it, it does work. Um, I love this intro, man, this is fucking gold, it's so cool. Um, as far as screen quality, it's a 14-inch CRT, it's not really that great. Um, the other thing that's kind of dumb about it is the Dreamcast, of course, used VGA for high-resolution modes. This doesn't in any way, shape, or form take advantage of that. Because of that, it can run non-VGA compatible games, but they don't look very good. Uh, it also, I double checked this, it doesn't run games in RGB, it doesn't run games in S-Video. That's a straight composite pass-through, which is unfortunate. Cool thing though, on the side it has these LEDs, see this, lighting up on the side? That uh, only works uh, in Dreamcast mode. How cool is that? Uh, if you were to have it play some audio in TV mode or composite mode, it's just not going to do anything at all. I fucking love this intro. This is like, yes, I am ready. Let's play some fucking video games. Um, this is back when Sonic was cool. I know, it's kind of weird. But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, very cool design to have these weird lights inside. You can also see inside of the monitor. All right, I'm going to turn it off because I don't really feel like getting content ID claim. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, it works perfectly fine, obviously. Uh, now... Uh, I think from a hardware perspective, there's not really much else to say. Uh, it's just a bizarre thing. But uh, I can tell you a little bit about, well, the stuff it came with. You know, it came with a keyboard, as mentioned before. This is this keyboard is unique to the device. Uh, the, the molding for it was used in Japan for other keyboards, but this one specifically is the miniature Divers 2000 version. It's all green. Uh, same with the controller. Uh, again, used the same green uh, style. It even changed the logo on it from a Dreamcast logo to one that just says Divers 2000 Series CX-1. Comes with um, the Dream Eye, which was released separately as a white uh, webcam. But with this, you get a special green version. It comes with a headset and a microphone adapter, so you can use that. And of course, a special remote control and a copy of Visual Park, which is the software you need to be able to do Skype-like shit. Um, now, my story with this thing, as mentioned before, I did do a video on this thing, which was a very unique perspective because, again, at the time I made that video, there was almost nothing on the internet about this thing. And since then, I feel like I kind of screwed up the market for this thing a little bit because I proved that it existed. And I know that makes me sound like almost arrogant, like, oh, fuck you, you had no effect on it. Maybe, or maybe I did, because I proved that it was real, um, which is unfortunate because when I first heard about this thing, I was in high school, it was like 2002, 2003, something like that. And I was like, oh, that's cool, I'll never get my hands on that thing, though. And then I was going hard for Dreamcast stuff in 2007, 2008, 2009. And in around 2008, when the economic crash happened, uh, there was one guy who was trying to unload these things. There was a guy in Japan with three of these things boxed, sealed, and he was only asking $300 shipped from Japan for one of these. Now that was hard because the economy had totally tanked, but I was like, fuck it, I have to pull that trigger. This is something that I think is just cool as shit to own. 
um, and I got it, and uh, the, f the weird thing about that is the guy did like a badly translated video uh, kind of explaining roughly that they had found like a surplus, meaning three of them, in a warehouse somewhere, and they just kind of wanted to get rid of them. Uh, maybe it was cheap because of the economy crashed, I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, so I got it, I had it for a little while, and then I made my video, and people were like, holy shit, the thing's real. Now, uh, you combine that with the fact that the economy has gotten better, but basically, I started seeing them sell for $500, then $1,000, then $1,500, then $2,000. Last time I saw one of these things sell, it was for about $5,000. At the time I make this video, there's one online, one on eBay, literally called The Last Divers 2000 in the Universe, is what the guy called it, and he, he's asking $6,500. And the sad thing is, he'll probably get it at some point, because there just aren't that many of these things, and it's so bizarre that it ever existed. So to think now, in hindsight, that I got this thing for 300 bucks, I'm grateful, but I'm also sorry to anyone out there who wanted one of these things and got fucked by virtue of the fact that maybe me making a video about it introduced too many people to it. Sorry, but I guess that time has passed, that's why I was able to make another one now, because even if you want it, you can't really get it unless you've got $6,500 laying around, um, which don't, it's not worth it. <laughs> sorry, but it's true. Um, but yeah, man, that's... That's kind of it with this thing, you know, it, it was a, one of those ideas, man, where they, they were just reaching for the stars, but they just did not even get close to it. They fell back to earth hard. Um, but yeah, I still have the original box for this thing. Uh, I didn't get rid of it or anything. It's a big cardboard box. It's just really ugly. It just says Divers 2000. It's not interesting. It's literally the box they just ship it in. But I just kind of wanted to give an update to this thing, let you guys know. I still have it. It's still in great shape. I still take care of it and everything. It's got its own special place. And uh, it's really cool to have. And uh, I want to thank you guys for watching this and looking into it. And I'll see you all later.